and we'll see how they perform because here we go we are underway <laughs> gaku will be kicking us off here with a queen charge into lalo maxi yep no waiting time for you guys at home action packed clash of clans here today on this saturday afternoon morning or evening wherever you are and navi uh, coming in with their starter with gaku the queen charge lalo is one of his preferred strategies especially as of late he has been using it uh, loads of times but he is still um, an attacker that can make uh, basically any other troop work as well and we can see a queen charge right into raged up defenses and we can see both of these ground targeting expos plus the multi inferno also raining Ooh, Ooh, big damage oh. on the queen and as i say that she dies in her ability and we were just saying how good gaku is with the queen charge lalo eric oh. but now he has just has to recover because you definitely don't want to start like that yeah, he needs to secure the town hall. The town hall has rage tower next to it. There's not an invisible tower to stop him from taking it down. I really feel at this point here, just make sure that he gathers up as many of the perimeter defenses as possible and deliver that blimp to the town hall with the warden ability protecting it. He does exactly that. He needs to get all of these archer towers along the edge of the base there down as much as possible. So, tornado trap freezes, freezes. Okay, secure the town hall. He has the rage active of his own, drops on top of it, and got it. Okay, crisis of burden. Gather percentage, recover what you can here, and see how far you can carry this. Honestly, uh, I have seen Gaku recover way better than this. He uses the rage spell there over on the town hall side with with um, balloons basically that are just dying before they take out any defense. See, now he basically has to make sure he gets the two stars even. He has so many spells and he sh should make sure to use them. For example, on the left side, freeze the scatter shot and the and uh, whatever. Yeah, exactly. And use the haste spell. But look at how late he does this. There's just basically one balloon on each side. And I feel like Gaku was you know, caught completely off guard with his queen dying early. And that is something I have rarely seen. And maybe that is due to the fact that they have, you know, Navi um, have found themselves losing against this team recently. And, you know, just know that they are beatable. Because remember, guys, these are the reigning world championships of Clash of Clans. And um, this, uh, th this is the first qualification tournament for this year's world championship. And so there's also a little bit of pressure on them because they are known to be one of the be world's best teams. A two-star from mm -hmm, someone like mm -hmm. Gaku, where you're used to, you know, hear, uh, hear yeah. him tripling in the first attack, um, then this can be very upsetting for you. But Eric, now we have to focus on this blimp because we know super archer blimps, they can, you know, if they work or not, can decide an attack. He will send this blimp in by the ward ability, lands into that builder hut compartment there. He will have, he was able to, oh, he has able to open up the walls there. Looks like he had a couple of wall breakers inside. As soon as the wall breakers step away and explode into the walls, then he drops in the clones. Clones of only super archers here and will start to rip up the core of the base here. He got the CC pole that's over on the left side there being fought, but he was able to have the super archers wow. secure the town hall. He will get them to lock onto the Eagle Artillery. They're taking the multi-inferno to get the scatter shot. The scatter shot is the last primary part of the value that he's looking for there, and he leaves it just shy. But you know okay. what? He got so many other high value targets. I think he's in a very good spot. I think that's the value that he's looking for there. While not exactly perfect, it's something he can work with next. <clears throat> Yeah, I agree, and uh, we just saw him using his Royal Champion down there, and that is exactly what we were expecting. So the Royal Champion could follow the King and the Queen, but unfortunately he missed the funnel there, and now he's finding Scally Traps! So many! Mm -hmm. I mean, the Scatter Shot was already low, and he was forced to use the ability of the Royal Champion because of all the Scally Traps, but I think the value was still good. Queen and, I mean, King still alive. If he could only take out the enemy Queen, maybe the, the Multi Inferno, that would give him a lot of value, but would he... Uh, sorry, mm. Eric, uh, troops are thin. <laughs> out already left and right and even after this insane value is he still failing this wow those heroes just got shut down like uh, obviously the skelly trap shut down the road champion but i'm surprised the king of the queen didn't make it very far into the top of the base i would have expected them to at least go into the scatter shot and the multi inferno and power for the defensive queen but without them to have the lalo to go over their head and get the support and have them survive obviously there's no chance he pulls through but Look at the percentage on this one, Maxi. He's only climbing into the 70s. He's got another minute. There's a decent amount of trash here that is exposed. He can go ahead and pick up whatever he can reach, but it is not going to give a huge advantage into Chaz Mac EA's favor. It is a manageable amount here for Navi to overcome now. Yep. 
I couldn't agree more. Uh, like, this is pretty surprising, and we know how hard it is to fly a Lalo without any spells, but that's, you know, what uh, what you what you deal for <laughs> when you use the Super mm -hmm. Archer Blimp. Uh, but when you do it, you really need to make the most out of your heroes. You know, we know that they are very, very strong, and you take out so many key defenses with the Super Archer Blimp, but then the heroes, they have to make sure the Lalo has an easy pathing so you can, you know, go through the rest of the base without the support of any spells. And I think that he didn't get the value he would have needed from his heroes in this case. And it was due to the fact that he didn't get the scatter shot with the um with the uh, blimp but also because he didn't uh, you know correctly get a funnel there on the archer tower with his balloons he tried to use um, differently after that super archer bomb to make that go through but hindsight's 2020 and let's see now if stars can make it through he's going to be sending in clone with five invisibilities here he could definitely be doing something very similar, although not quite enough spell support to do a full Super Archer bomb. But we'll decide, we'll see what he decides to do. I'm imagining it's going to be Super Wizards in here. He sends in the blimp. He's going to try to land right at the Rage Tower there. He opens up into the Eagle Artillery Department. Would have been, oh, you know what? He clones <laughs> up ahead and he gets the clones to go forward and he's able to get them into that Rage Tower compartment that he fell short of. And they will start to tear up that Earth Base there. Less spells being committed into this one than we saw in the last attack but also not as many targets claimed that multi inferno is going to stay standing the sweeper stays standing the rage tower stays standing and now we'll see if that's enough value here maxi to push these heroes into the base with a bit more spell support for the actual lalo yeah it was a good call to go um to, to send you her, his queen so she and the the king that he will shortly pu put down will go into the left scatter shot compartment because the multi inferno is still there and so they can get this extra value but you said it there was a you know su such a uh, 200 iq move there to clone the the super archers over the wall um, and also investing not that many spells because he knew that there were not um, there were not so many high um, HP buildings close by. We usually see a super archer blimp take out you know the monolith and the town hall, and uh, these have very many HP. And you know once the super archers start um, targeting other defenses, you really need to go heavy on these invisibility spells. But in this case, he just needed a couple of buildings, so he was able to. Um, cut down on spells there and that leaves him with five spells for the Lalo so this is going to be a little easier for him than it was before for Heroia but now we have to see him get into the town hall and look at all the traps Eric red mines Teslas all popping up there where he starts his Lalo he needs to get this town hall down Got the defensive <laughs> rage tower goes off and the blues get destroyed right there as they go to the town hall. One star is a real possibility right now. He needs to secure the town hall takedown. Oh. He goes invisible with his... Oh, he's late on that invisibility. The king pushes in. He throws in everything he has at the town hall. Oh, everything no. he has left. Tornado trap. Red air bombs. Take the town hall. The king, the king maybe with the, take with it, the take phoenix. It. Oh, he's got the phoenix. He's got the no, phoenix. He's, he's got the phoenix. Phoenix working. No! strike there of that phoenix is down to a fraction of hp he's got one sneaky goblin can it get it though i i the battle bill is repairing it oh no. yep, stars. It is it. and look at this guys stars claimed i mean not even claimed basically based on fact facts oh, claimed man. to be one of the best not the best player it's in the world right now but no, I, I just have to say it, this base building there from Chasmek wow. was incredible. You could see the surprise on Stars' face when all of these red mines, all of these Teslas popped up around the town hall. He wasn't expecting it to be that well prepared. Around that multi-inferno instantly dropped out of the sky and everything he threw it after it, just struggled to push any further. But looks like we're going to be sending in a Skelly Donut on the next one here. I imagine going after the CC and has this uh, choice of lots of different options around it. Most people opt for the monolith as we know how much damage that monolith can do, but he can take his pick here. Maybe even grab multiple targets if the spacing is right. Looks like he is going to be trying to go after three targets there. Monolith, CC, and also the multi-inferno. If you can get all three of those targets. Also working on the bomb tower there as well. That's a nice <laughs> extra bonus. That's uh, that's just more fun. More defenses that he will not have to hover over with the blues later on. And potentially have more traps 
that in that area will never actually come out. But yeah, that was some big Skelly Donut value right there, wiping out the core of the base. And if you didn't know, skeletons and bat spells do not pull the CC. You cannot pull the CC with a spell. And that means with the CC building being destroyed by them, the troops can Ooh, no longer king. deploy. And now he can push his way forward <laughs> here. We'll see how far he can make it to the base here, Maxi. Yes, it was very good value, I agree, but look at this, the, the, the headhunter, uh, the Yeti was actually not able to take out any defense there, and that made for the king going the wrong way, not tanking for the queen, now he needs to use the ability early, so he doesn't get that much value, you know, you want your heroes usually to work together, king can tank very much, queen and royal champion, take, uh, uh, royal champion only takes out defenses, queen deals a lot of damage, but he, at this point he didn't have this, um, this uh, working together, this symbiosis between his heroes that you usually want to get. And we can see still a lot of events up on the top side and also around this town hall. So now he still has to get into it. Same oh. situation as before with Stars, Eric. Can he get it? I don't know. He's got the word <laughs> ability. He's got some freezes. He can hold it at bay here, but he's throwing a lot of blues. Early word ability. Tornado. There's the tornado. <laughs> don't do this to us again. Take the town hall. Please take it. Just take it. Just take it. Okay, I think he's got it. I think. Ever so slightly. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's going to lose all of his blues there in the process, though. What? I mean, you're, you're saying that the heroes didn't get a lot of value, but they did take out a pretty significant chunk of the base, but what's up with these uh, town halls, with the rage towers next to them? They're just melting through everything that goes into that area, and they're having to commit so much more into it than we'd usually expect, and at this point, I would almost just say, switch over to blimps. Just take those town halls down <laughs> and see if you can somehow get those rage towers to trigger early. There's got to be a way that they can find a way around it. These guys know that there is, but these bases, I'm telling you, there's something special going on here, uh, Maxi. This is pretty incredible on defense. Yeah, I couldn't re agree more uh, with this. This is a crazy war on the defensive side, especially since we have two teams that were one of uh, some of the best uh, in offense before. I mean, Navi mm -hmm. was actually second best team on offense. I have noticed that Bernal has been using this specific attack yes. through a lot of their recent wars, and he's going to be trying to break out the Super Archer Bomb, just like we saw in the previous attacks there, but he needs to have the Warden to protect this blimp. We saw some of the attacks there use the Warden to protect the blimp, some of them don't, but this one definitely was necessary because it has a long way to go. It absorbs two Black Air Bombs on his path through, and the blimp does land all the way in the middle of the base there, but he would have preferred, I think, that actually had wall breakers inside, so he can transition to the Town Hall. He really want to secure the Town Hall takedown with the Super Archers, if at all possible, and he'll have two more invisibilities after this one to reach over there, lock on, and take it down, but I'm not sure if he's going to get it, and if he doesn't get it, that's going to be a bit of a oh, problem, oh. and you can yep. see his frustration, visible frustration there, as he realizes that it is not going to go down. And he's going to have to come to his heroes in to take the Town Hall because Rocket Blues with no spell support are definitely not going to do the job down there. Yeah, and I got to say, if he had gotten it down, this base would have been done for. <laughs> like, he oh, got yeah. so much value <laughs> other than that. Even taking out the Eagle now with a couple of Rocket Balloons, just, um, you know, uh, surgically sending them in, still having 20 in the bag. And if that, just imagine if that Town Hall was gone. Like, this base, there was nothing left. But we, once again, we see a very well-protected Town Hall here. Ground exposed, multi-inferno, two bomb towers, and with so many more defenses around there. And I, I bet, Eric, that there are also a lot of red mines. So I think he's doing good trying to get there with his heroes, but unfortunately the ground expo already looking onto his queen. He doesn't have any spells, so he has to make sure to take it out, sending in the royal champion there. Just imagine if he uses his queen ability early, he will have a very hard time taking out this town hall. So Diggy stunning the expo is worth a lot here, and Eric, once again, it's about the town hall takedown. You got the Diggy still, still there alive. Maybe we get the stun with the RC right here. There's the Diggy lock up. The Diggy's not survive. I guess Diggy, Diggy didn't survive. So the Royal Champion rides the down hall on her own. And so he needs to at least oh, clear no. the defenses around there. He needs to have the remaining Rocket Blues with their haste to search in to get the final strikes. He can get crash damage even if he can't get the strikes off themselves. Oh. One more should do it. And I think he's okay here. He's got plenty more Rocket Blues. He can oh. have plenty of backup methods to secure the town hall. Crisis averted there, but like I said, when you have to have the heroes go to Town Hall, the Town Hall does so much extra damage when you would have preferred those heroes came into a different area of the base and set up these Rocket Bloons better. But these Rocket Bloons are not going to have a chance to pull through on the 
right hand side of the base and they're all gonna get shot out of the sky so he'll gather some decent percentage here but they really needed a triple to recover from the one star right now so they'll be hunting for another defense here and we'll see if they can get it yep and uh, i mean honestly this got pretty far anyone else to use a super archer blimp there um yeah i would be uh, would be very excited to to re-watch this um at some point but eric it's yara now coming in with the next attack and um let's see if he can get a three star this time around yeah, we don't need to re-watch it we just got to reenact it you who is that by <laughs> yara said in the same attack here and we'll see if we can do it better but this one using regular balloons instead of the rock of balloons but still we got to get the super archer uh, bomb value here making his way in towards the town hall he's got the invisible tower that goes off and that's gonna get these super archers to turn around and attack something else for just a moment that's fine they have so much invisibility they can wait it out and now they can lock on and they can secure the town hall takedown we saw how much trouble that town hall caused in the last one but just the town hall is not the total amount of value that you want to get is he'd also like to get out the eagle the multi the expo anything else anything you can get here is going to increase your odds of pulling through and now we'll see how far he can push with this hero's coming to the bottom remember warden was already committed so he will not have warden support on the other side of the base once he starts in that lalo Yep, and he got the Rage Tower as well with the very last shots. Also, Eric, I, I paid very close attention to any spring traps being around these super archers. I couldn't <laughs> see any. Um, so this time, uh, it, I feel like Navi was not expecting uh, this exact entry here from Yara. And, uh, but now, I mean, he, he got good value, but he still has to make the most out of his heroes, as we pointed out before. So let's see how far they can get. But, you know, there's just 1 minute and 30 on the clock. So, you know, you gotta be quick. And that's why Yara is also starting simultaneously on the right top side of the space with the Lalo and that is very impressive to see these these players multitasking here doing several things at the same time the um, the hero dive is still going on the Lalo is moving into this eagle and monolith but there are just a couple of moons left let's see if they can take out these key defenses the um, eagle and the monolith yeah also the Multi-Inferno is still standing in the middle of the base. They're going to be a really difficult task to get through. He has a Queen ability, though. And if the Queen can stay to the inside, which she is, then he could get her to go in here and take out the Multi. But the rock balloons, or excuse me, the, the regular balloons are falling out of the sky there before they can get towards that Monolith. The Monolith oh, holds tornado. the line. The Scattershot <laughs> oh, no. is going to stop him up there. The Queen gets stuck in the Tornado. And <laughs> he unlucky. needed to get that defensive Queen down to have a chance to push his World Champion through. And now she's going to go base first into the arrows of the defensive queen and she's not going to last very long even if she gets her down which she will she's not going to have a lot of hp afterwards because it delivered her hp pool so far right there that she's obviously going to get shot down by all these heavy defenses we got ground expos you got the warden statue and then of course the model on the backside needed the balloons to push at least i guess over into the ground expo to have a chance to push this world champion through Yep, still decent percentage in the 90s, uh, which we have rarely seen this war. So uh, still doing a good job here for his team. He will stop at 91%, but his team will still be in the lead. I mean, it's at this point, it's mm -hmm. anybody's in the world. And Kazuma will be going in next. He will strike for Navi with a queen charge into Lalo. And it is another box base. We're seeing the dual rage towers. We've seen how dangerous that rage tower is by the town hall. We've seen how dangerous the rage tower is surrounded by multi infernos around the eagle artillery. There is no easy side of this base. But Kazuma opting to charge the town hall to try to get that multi inferno down early. And as he makes his way forward, we will have the CC drawn out. Unless he can pull it out early, he will be locked onto the model when he fights the CC, and obviously that always presents some problems, and we'll see how he handles it here. But he wall breaks into the multi inferno, and looks like he'll have a direct line approach into the town hall area, and there's a ton of damage right there, especially when that rage tower pops, and the dual ground Ooh. expo picks up. That's how Goku's queen died through ability early on in the war, and Kazuma able to push through, stay alive, but he still has a lot more time that this damage will be sustained on him, Maxi. Yes, but he did so good there with the invisibility spell because we know that the Warden ooh, actually does so much damage and using another <laughs> invisibility spell. He was prepared for that, but the Rage was a little late. Okay, reacting right there with the Freeze Monolith is on the Queen, but he sent the King in just in time. We can see how ma many, uh, how much thought uh, Kazuma has put into this charge with the uh, number of spells wow. that he brought. Um, and now the Queen will have to face the Monolith and the Clan Castle troops in just a second, standing in the Town Hall Poison. That 
could be devastating. That's why he uses the Queen ability right away. And wow. uh, notice how he has two wall breakers left. So he wants to still get deep into the base, I think. Oh, yeah. He's not done with his Queen. She wants to go all the way into the Eagle Artillery and the two multi-infernos. He wants even more than this Queen has already claimed. He's got the freezes. Slammer comes in at the bottom. A Lalo in from the left. And he's got his road champion with her ability as she fights off the defensive CC. The Queen's able to avoid the CC and get directly to that monolith with her ability. But that means she does not have an ability for the defensive queen on the backside. So have a freeze on standby. Be ready to protect her. And I guess the Blues need to get the ward ability. Okay, he waited as long as he could there. And he still hasn't <laughs> popped it. What's the why? All right, maybe he's waiting for the Blues to get targeted. He is delaying his ward ability for eternity there. Finally pops it. And he did end up losing his queen, but the heal is transferred over to the world champion and will continue the charge. And he snuck in headhunters to cross through under the word ability. Wow. And he reaches across the base. And there it is. Maxi <laughs> Nami has done it. Kazuma gets it done. That was a crazy queen charge. And he pulls through in the end, passing the Silas off and locking in our first triple of the war. Yeah, that was a brilliant attack there not gonna lie the the value there the the way he planned out this charge like he estimated exactly how much damage would rain onto his queen at the tower and this way he just needed one balloon and making sure all his big group of balloons stays in the core of the base so a beautiful job there not only with the charge but also with the lalo and uh, sorry i had to had to monologue about this for so long but it was really really beautiful to see but now eric it's the next attack for chasmac and uh, now they they need a three star or a high percent two star, right? Yes, a very very impressive attack there from Kazuma, but Equal is gonna try to match it here with his lightning that takes out the Rage Tower. Get the Rage Tower out of the way early. The Rage Tower was faded by the time that the heroes start to take damage as they make their way forward. Here comes the Log Launcher. He's gonna do a bit of a hero dive here with the Log Launcher to support now. He's going to hold on to the ward ability. Sometimes we see the ward ability committed into these hero dives as well to try to get more value. But with the king and the queen controlling all the defense in the area, in addition to that golem, he's able to keep that log launcher protected until it throws the yetis all the way into the core of the base. And if they get that eagle artillery down, he's in a very good spot. However, <laughs> he's end up wandering off to the right side here. And we'll see as his queen gets stalled up onto the defensive lava hound while taking Grand Warden strikes. How far he can push the queen and the world champion through the base after this? Yeah, that was quite unfortunate that he, you know, barely missed the um, the the warden there or did the warden take out, and also that the yetis went away from the eagle. But I think the queen, maybe she's going in there. But anyways, it's good to see a log launcher here after because both of these teams, I think, did uh, did very often use them, and it's very always very beautiful to see how the logs can take out the multi inferno. But at this point, let's concentrate on the town hall take down because that is what equal is going for with his lalo there can the lava hound maybe pop right around the town hall oh he freezes um to make sure that his balloon survive and maybe he can protect even the um ice hound with the warning ability yes he does and i think with the spells he has on hand eric there there is a chance that this will become the next three star of this war Ah, the the, the, the Eagle strikes are raining down. Ooh, they now were. he goes Ooh, with Wicked Blues and the... Oh my gosh, they all got evaporated there. That Eagle Artillery Strike hit every single one of those Blues. They were all plumped up and it took out every surviving troop there. They were all packed up there by the Tornado Trap and they were grouped and ready. It was like a bowling ball coming down an alley and it just knocked every <laughs> single one of them down as they were just... They were put into a pile. There was no way that he could have really avoided that. It's a defense, guys. And now... The stars have now tied up. Navi got the defense they need. They got the triple that they needed. They tie up the score. And we're going to go to the final exchange with an equal footing here for both teams. But I think it's still going to be a percentage advantage <laughs> in Chaz Mackie's favor. And that means Klaus, the final attacker from Navi, their closer, is going to have to get a really high attack here, preferably a triple, and put some heavy pressure over to the last attacker from Chaz Mackie. Still used to the, their old name. Or Navi does not get the three star, and then Chaz Mac wins with a three star or 11% more. But enough numbers now it's just clash now it's just klaus eric and what has he brought to the table 
final attack of the border. Whole season could come down to this. Klaus going in with the Skelly Donut, going after the CC, taking down the Multi Inferno, getting the Battle Builders a nice extra bonus there, but his primary targets are under control here. He will claim both of them. Get the Sweeper as well. Not quite getting the Sweeper. The Battle Builders will repair any damage that was sustained as a. Uh, any collateral damage in the area as the Skelly Donut wraps up, but he is able to destroy the CC. That means no CC troops can now deploy. King will deploy and go to the left there. He's going to get funneled by the Queen and get pushed into the Defensive Queen. He drops in an Ice Golem. Headhunters locks down the Defensive Queen and gives those Headhunters a chance to go through. While Blues get the funnel formed there, the King with the Defensive Queen clear out of the way, going to go directly into the scatter shot and take out a key compartment there while the Queen Pops her ability, goes invisible, takes the monolith down, and between the two of them... Oh, wait, I take it back. The king did not go where he wanted, so the world champion is potentially not going to get the value of the core, and that Ooh. could complicate the eagle artillery takedown here, Maxi. Yes, but you look at this. He just sent in the warden with a little Lalo portion and a blimp, and then protecting the king with it, with the warden ability. Very interesting, but he wants this royal champion to take out the eagle artillery, but the ground expo goes down Ooh. just a little bit too late. Now it's mainly down to this one balloon, but usually in the core we have some traps. Can it actually finish the, the eagle artillery? That would be insane, but you look can. as it goes, <laughs> still going strong. One balloon against the wow, world, okay. and he gets it done, and Klaus still has a chance in this. Okay, well, he still has the defensive road champion in the backside. He's got six balloons. He's got haste. He's got freeze. The ward is still alive and healthy. He's not following the king anymore. He's back to following the balloons. So he's got a chance here. He gets down the defensive road champion with those headhunters. The balloons swarm through, freezing up the scatter shot. He's got the haste. Come on, Klaus. You're so close. He's got the time. I feel like he's good there. He's got the phoenix that came off of the king, and that's assisting. And he gets the scatter shot down. He's just coasting from here, but he has a, a haste to coast a bit faster. This air defense drops the warden, and the rest of the blues can finish it. But he's taking the scenic crowd here. Wait, the Phoenix is on it. Go, Phoenix. And let's go. Klaus picks up the triple. And Navi will put the pressure over to Chaz Mackie. That was clutch, Maxi. Yes, it was. <laughs> wow. And now we really need Chesmec to get a three star in their last attack. That was so close. And, you know, Klaus with the pressure on Chesmec, Eric. And now it's down to this final attack from Takana. All right. Here we go. More comes down to this. They have their opportunity. They can. Defeat the defending world champions just like they did in the Itsu Cup yesterday. They have their chance. They must deliver. It's a queen charge into Hog Riders. He has a blimp. He could either use the blimp to go funnel the queen or to secure the town hall. He opts to use it to form the funnel. That blimp is dropped inside of the radius of the defensive CC. And he will draw it out there. And now he can fight the CC in relative safety. He's got headhunters coming his way there. He quickly gets poison out of them. And he will handle them. That means he's not going to have a poison for the Lava Hound when it arrives. But the queen gets pushed right into that little mini channel. And she will fight out the CC with just an expo on her. And now... Just needs to be patient here as he makes the approach towards the town hall. Evaluating the town hall compartment, we're looking at multiple ground expos. We see the rage tower. We saw during Kazuma's attack how dangerous these town hall compartments can be when they're stacked like this with the rage towers, with the Tesla farm now, with the king, with the warden, all of those heavy defenses. Monolith sitting back there. This is going to be a charge of all charges here. <laughs> and if he's able to pull through, he will defeat Navi with this attack. So, the pressure uh, build, the tension build here for just a second, catching some black air bombs. And Maxi, how do you feel about this? I don't know. It's going to go down to the, uh, come down to the next couple of seconds when the queen will actually get into even more damage, sending the headhunter. But the headhunter will get destroyed by the multi beams. He will have to get the, like honestly, this is all or nothing. So I think he should just start with the hawk riders at the top. You know, throw down one right. more rage spell, one more free spell at the bottom, and start the hawk rider because he oh the one now he bought okay, the 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 and look at this now the eagle tar targets the, the healers. Oh no! Start with the other troops on the top side, and the healers are oh, down for Takana. No. No. 
Are you kidding me? I don't think this is recoverable. I think Navi is gonna make up for their one star no, and move on to the next round. Not even getting a way to secure the town hall. The queen rounded around it and Takana's fallen heavily short here. It's looking like a one star to me and that's gonna keep Navi in the upper bracket of the queso cup here that is a crazy crazy recovery you think when you start off the board with some low percentage hits and a one star it's over but you hold strong to the end and you just let it play out the best you can maxi what an incredible recovery there from navi pulling their board back when it seemed right out of the gate there that all was lost absolutely i couldn't agree more and Oh, you know, I, I basically, I said it. I said Navi needs two triples and they need to hold down um, Chesmec. Mm -hmm. And I also said Chesmec were most likely not going to get a one star. Well, here you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. But wow. honestly, Takana started this attack off so well. Like the timing on his first rage spell, the Coco balloons uh, taking out the, uh, the, the Black Mines. Congratulations to Navi here, by the way, for getting the win. And, you know, leading this charge into the town hall. But if, I feel like at some point he just lost control of his attack. He should have, you know, been been ballsy. He should have been um, confident and just sent in um, the, the, head, uh, the, the, the Hog Riders with the Warden and Royal Champion from the other side. But he needed to invest a couple more spells for his queen. Mm -hmm. He was probably a little too greedy there. He should have just froze the Warden. Warden is the biggest damage dealer on single target. Then sent in the king to funnel the queen and rage her up. But yeah. he was just waiting for too long there. And I really feel like this damaged this attack. I mean, you know, look at this. Production still giving him two stars for the effort in this uh, in this graphic. <laughs> Very nice of them. But yeah, unfortunately, he fell. <laughs>